Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. My name's Dave. Today I went to the Flash train meet at the Renegers in Kutztown, PA. The Flash train meet at the Renegers in Kutztown is a good medium-sized show. It's held outside in two outdoor pavilions, and this time there was an additional small pavilion that had some trains in it as well. This show is free to attend, so that's a nice plus. And there's always a lot of great stuff, uh, mostly O and HO. But this Flash train meet is one that I've been to a number of times. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many. Uh, but this is the show that I had seen the MPC era Southern uh, Mikado far set for $200, and I didn't buy it. And after I left, I was just regretting it so bad. And then the next time I went, it was still there. And you know, I walked away from it again. And then I was like, you know, I gotta go back and pick it up. And by the time I turned myself around and went back to get it, it was gone. But that's the kind of show that it is. There's always a great deal. One of the killer deals that I saw today were two sets of Lionel ABA F7s or F3s, I'm not sure which. One was Atlantic Coastline. I don't recall what the other one was, but ABA sets. I didn't check the features, but at 200 bucks per set, it really wouldn't matter. That's a good deal either way. I saw one as somebody was purchasing it, and I was considering the Atlantic Coastline. And I kind of had to turn around and check my funds to see what I had on me. And as I'm doing that, somebody else swoops in and buys it. So not meant to be, but that's okay. There's plenty of bargain basement stuff. And my first purchase, I spent $5. What am I gonna do with these pieces? I have no idea. Uh, mm, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick up more pieces to the set at some point. But I picked up not one, but two of these articulated passenger cars. I believe it's American Flyer. Uh, these have both been painted, um, but for five bucks, I was like, you know, they're unique. If nothing else, I'll do something with them. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, maybe I can attach it to a tender and pull it behind one of my Marx engines. I don't know. I really didn't think it through. But at five bucks, I picked these up because they're just, they're cool. Considering I've been really enjoying uh, detailing, weathering, and putting lights in, in die-cast vehicles lately, I picked up another pickup truck. And not one, not two, not three, but four of these taxis. Because if you're gonna have one taxi, you might as well have a bunch of taxis. So that one pickup and four of these taxis, five bucks. So I've already got a good amount of stuff and I've only spent $10. I did spend five bucks on just one pickup, but that's okay because it's a lot like the pickup that I have sitting in my driveway rotting. And that would be a Chevy 3100, early to mid fifties. Maybe it's a, uh, 53, I don't know, five window. It's a nice looking truck and it's pretty close to the color that my truck's supposed to be. Maybe someday I'll work on that truck or maybe it'll just turn to dust in my driveway. Who knows? So we're up to 15 bucks. I've been 3D printing buildings you know, and once you have the printer, it's relatively cheap. A roll of filament costs like 15 bucks and you, know, you can print an entire building with half of it. Uh, so it doesn't cost a lot once you have the printer but it takes a lot of time. Uh, and there's also, it can be prone to issues if your settings aren't right or if the air temperature is off. And it can be a little frustrating. So I was looking at buildings, you know, O scale type buildings that maybe I could pick up cheap and use them layout. This one caught my eye, the grain elevator. It's huge. It's a Lionel model. It's missing some of the detail pieces. It's kind of, poorly glued and coming apart. What sold me on this was the price tag. $5, $5, $5. I couldn't even print something this size on my printer. It's too big. So for five bucks, heck yeah. Uh, I might take it all apart and try to clean these uh, glue filled areas. Uh, these seams aren't very good. You know, you wouldn't be able to light that. All the light would be shining out the cracks. So five bucks, grain elevator. I'm also wondering if I could adapt it more to a coaling tower instead of a grain elevator. But 
either way, if, even if I don't use it, five bucks has given me something to work with. I also have no idea where I'm gonna put it. So there I am, 20 bucks. And that's a good haul of stuff. I have to admit, I was really only half-heartedly trying to do a $20 challenge or a $30 challenge. And this would have been a great $20 challenge. I mean, a building, a bunch of die-cast cars, and some tin plate. I just, that's an awesome haul. I could have left. But there were a couple of engines that were really looking good to me. Uh, one was a Conrail GP something or other, uh, but it was conventional and I just, I don't know, I guess I've been a little spoiled. Uh, if I'm going to buy a conventional engine, I kind of want it to be cheap and it wasn't cheap cheap. But there's one particular engine I've been looking at probably every train show. So it's available. I see it all the time. The price ranges drastically for this model. So I've always been looking to get one at the lowest price possible. And there was one for sale for a while on trains that was missing pieces or the boiler was loose or something. And I was just waiting for it to drop like another 10 bucks. And it would have been like 120 plus shipping. Uh, and I guess I just waited too long. So today there was an engine, same engine. I think it was 215 marked down to 175. And I looked at it, I walked away, I considered leaving, and I figured maybe I'd do a respectful lowball offer on it and see what happened. So I walked back and I said, will you take 150? And he said, yes. So I picked up an engine I've been looking at at probably every train show. And Nick has definitely been pushing me to pick this up for a long time. And now I have it. It is, drum roll please, the K-Line Pensy 040 with TMCC. It's a little slick on the bottom. I don't know if that's excessive oil. Uh, more likely it's too much smoke fluid, which makes me worry is the smoke unit cracked and has it all leaked out through the engine? Or was it not producing smoke and somebody just kept putting fluid into it? I don't know. We're gonna find out together. Okay, uh, that's a good sign. I was just programming it because for some reason the switch was set to program, uh, which I hope is not an indicator of an issue. Uh, we'll turn the smoke unit on and change it back to run. Let's see if it moves. Oh, look at that. Oh, and it's smoking too. Well, it works. Uh, I don't know how well it picked up the noise since I have my microphone on and it's <laughs> intended to cut down background noise, but the whistle's good, the bell's good, uh, it chuffs, it talks, it does the shutdown. Uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, it, it's dirty and dusty and a little oily, uh, but that can be remedied. It smokes well, the rear light turns on when it goes in reverse. I have no complaints.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby.